Hi, I'm Everett. Welcome back to the shop. Uh, this video, uh, there's a few different things in it. Uh, first off, I uh, just want to say thank you to everybody who has uh, come by the channel and, you know, some of you who wanted to sign on and, you know, subscribe. Um, it really, honestly, it really surprises me to see uh, that I actually cracked 10,000 the other day. And, I mean, the thing is, every one of those... Uh, people in that number are people. Uh, interests, passions, hobbies, uh, that sort of thing, you know, and individual human beings. So, I mean, I wish I could get to know all of you. It's been fun to get to know those of you who've uh, emailed me and said hello, uh, put comments in, that sort of stuff. Um, I've met some really cool friends over the last couple of years doing this, and man, I wish I could meet all of you, but, you know, hang out in your shop with you for a bit and have a visit. But, Anyway, I just want to say thanks to everybody who has subscribed. Uh, if you haven't, that's totally cool. Uh, thanks for coming by and visiting the channel anyway. I do appreciate you coming by anyway. Um, because I've reached 10,000, um, I want to do another draw. And again, it's the prizes aren't huge. It's more just for the fun of it. And it's been, you know, it's really cool hearing from people who, you know, right there, right in. Um, up for grabs this time, similar to last time, is a 0 to 1 inch dial indicator. This one here has a little yellow ring around the outside. I actually kind of like these. They give a little better uh, contrast, a little easier on the eyes to read. At least I find. So there's one of these, as well as your typical standard, um, typical standard uh, 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 digital caliper. This one here does, uh, you know, fractions you know, metric and, uh, uh, yeah, fractions, metric and decimal inches. So, you know, these are seen all over, they're ubiquitous, I know. It's uh, it's just a small prize, I know, but I just want to say thanks to everybody who, uh, who wants to come by. If you're interested in getting in on the draw this time, um, all I ask is that you send me your first and last name, uh, in an email. Uh, I, ca I collect all of them. I don't share your information with anybody, uh, but I'll need your first and last name. If you want to give a little blurb about the sort of stuff you build or the sort of stuff you're interested in, that's cool. Met a lot of cool people doing that um, through the, just through the draws. And uh, the other thing is, uh, if you have already emailed me for one of the other draws up until now, your name is still in the bin. In fact, it's that silver bin up there that says draw names. The only names that are not in that bin are the, is the paperclip of people who've won already. So, And you know who you are. But anyway, if you're at all interested, I will be doing the draw on uh, Sunday, May 31st. Uh, roughly noonish my time, which is Mountain Daylight. If, you know, if it comes in, if I haven't done the draw by 1 and it comes in at 12.30, your name will still go in. I'm not that uptight. So, anyway... If you're interested, by all means, send me an email, your first and last name, and uh, it's up to you if you want to, you know, mention the sort of stuff you do. I also have another um, big thank you to give out. Uh, again, in the last couple of years getting to know people, uh, some people have uh, wanted to share some of the stuff that they have with, with me as far as tooling and uh, gizoids and that sort of thing. And Robert... Um, sent me a little package the other day and uh, it had a couple nice little boxes in it here. Uh, I believe these are boxes left over from um, uh, reloading equipment for reloading ammunition. Um, these are really cool because they're handy for putting small tools and uh, jigs and stuff in. So um, I do reload. I just haven't gone through as much the last little while because, well, having a toddler and a new baby, I haven't had a chance to really use what we've got. So uh, but uh, so I haven't really wound up with as many empty containers. So thanks Robert for those as well Robert in the box sent another little box with a couple of hole saws a little bit of rust cleanup and they'll be good to go. So thank you for those and Robert also sent me two drill chucks. These are half inch capacity actual Jacobs 33 BA um, drill chucks and I do actually have a plan for at least one of these. At some point, I want to make another project that's, uh, you know, that's going to need a drill chuck. So thank you, Robert. I do appreciate you sharing your stuff. Um, this is awesome. Just thank you. 
Um, thank you to everybody who has sent in stuff over the last uh, couple of years. I guess I've been at this, what, two and a half or so now. Um, I appreciate you sharing with me. I don't expect it. Uh, it's always nice if you do. Um, again, I just all I can say is thanks. So yeah, um, thanks again, Robert. Appreciate your appreciate you sharing with me, man. As far as the video is concerned, uh, I've also got a well. It would be it's sort of a simple milling project, but uh, work holding is more the issue with this one here. Um, I got a buddy who's got a uh, sawmill. It's a port, one of those portable sawmills with the big bands uh, bandsaw style, and he wants to extend the bed on it. Um, to him, uh, the cost of extending the bed is prohibitive, um, and so he happened to have some uh, four inch by four inch angle iron sitting around, and he wanted just basically he wanted the one web because you got your in your angle iron you got your your the two webs. He's going to leave this side at four. He wanted this side to be you know this side to be uh, two and five sixteenths, and reasonably consistent. So. What we what we've done is we're gonna have to set up the mill for um, for doing that. The only thing is my mill only has a certain level of travel on the table, and these are six foot bars. So as far as what I have here, one of the biggest challenges I'm gonna have is with work holding. Um, nicely enough, we only have to machine this surface down to two and five sixteenths from the from the table. We don't have to worry as much about uh, precision this way. So the piece of material itself is uh, roughly 180 centimeters long, 71 inches, just shy of six feet. My table is 28 and three quarters, roughly 73 centimeters. And even then the travel is less than that. I think the travel is something like 18 inches, which is give or take, what? Oh, you know, 46 millimeter or 46 centimeters. So we're going to have to do this in sections. So what I'd like to do is I need to be able to clamp it. In order to access this teak slot uh, here, I have to move the material this way, which pretty much covers this T slot. So we're going to have to do a little bit of unconventional, you know, uh, setup here. As far as for the length, I can support it out here. This is a stand. I have two of these that Eldon gave me that we're going to make a project out of at some point. Um, it's of course too short, so I added a, just a bit of a block, you know, zapped a couple blocks of scrap together of wood and then clamped it to there. So that creates a nice sort of, you know, feed out table if, as long as I keep it steady. Uh, still lets me clamp it to the table. Um, what we're going to do is we're going to use a piece of bed frame here. And I know this is actually not really considered, you know, normal procedure, I guess. It just has to be roughly parallel with the front here because we're going to be shuffling this along. Now, because this, uh, this little, well, I guess it's going to be a fence, is only there to line up. It's not really a work holding uh, piece. What we can do is I'm just going to use a couple of C clamps. One another end. I'm using a small piece of aluminum underneath the fixed side of the jaw just to avoid scratching or marring up the bottom side of the table because that's actually a wearing surface on the machine or a contact surface. that just to sort of feel the front. Again, we're going to use an end mill that's wider than the, than the work piece, so uh, this will be just, this will certainly be close enough. So that lets me use the clamping kit to grab the back. To set our zero, we'll take down to the table and now I don't really want to scratch at my table too much so I'm going to use the nicotineometer. Get it down close. Tighten up on that. 
tighten up on the down feed. There we go. That is going to be R0. Now, we back up. We can back up to 2.3125, and that's going to be where our, where our cut is going to be. Whoops, that's as far as that. Okay, so we reached the end of the travel here. That is where the, uh, that's where this little um, clamp is hitting the table. I was wondering where we'd hit that. So that's where we're going to set our work stop here. So that gives me approximately, well, one foot, 30 centimeters worth of travel. So yeah, I'll just have to readjust a number of times. I had to remove the uh, carriage hand wheel from the lathe in order for the material to slip in there. Yeah. Little challenges. Like I say, this is really pushing the limits of the size of the stuff I can handle in this shop. Put a 20 thou on there. Yeah. 2.312, 2.311, close enough. We're, th we're within a couple thousands considering, again, what it is and what it's supposed to do. That will have to be close enough. So now, what we're going to do Yeah, that little tap you hear is the handle on the other side, pretty much tapping the uh, material on the way by. So, successive passes will be interesting. Because I'm going to have less room to use my hand over on that knob. Like I say, a power feed at some point is on the to-do list. Slide this along.
As I say, this fence up here is merely a rough guide. It doesn't need to be This is why you need a spill-proof cut from uh, Jim Deadman. And you're clumsy like me. And carry on. Now our DRO here on the coil is still set from when we touched off on the table. So as long as I continually return to uh, 2.313 for our final pass, we're laughing. So I look, okay, we have about 90,000 to go off here. And I'm going conservatively on the first pass because this is all cut with a bandsaw and there's a bit of variability to it. Um, I'm just going to have to keep doing this until I get all of this side of all of them done. Then we'll flip around to the other side. Uh, I've done all the of the one side of each of the bars. Uh, now it's on to doing the second side. Uh, all I really did was flip the uh, fence from this side to the back side. And, um, yeah, just, well, more of the same. Again, I had to do this in sections because I've only got about, you know, 12 inches or 30 centimeters of the travel. So, like I say, I've gone for making one heavy rough and cut and then a finish cut after. That one came out reasonably, reasonably well. We're within a few thousandths of the last pass. So that's the basic idea. Uh, I just have another, well, three and two thirds uh, bars to do. Well, he told me two and five sixteenths is what he wanted uh, in the uh, in the shorter web. Just like that. So whatever that is, four inch by uh, two and five sixteenths. Uh, he never gave me a tolerance. However, I discovered basically also that because this is hot rolled and has a little bit of waviness to it, plus the table itself on the mill, I mean, it's, it's a small mill. Um, I was able to keep within 15 thousandths over the entire length of the, of the uh, uh, plus or minus 15 over the length of the six foot. So really for a sawmill track, that should be good. Um, I mean, it's a, it's a bandsaw style saw. Uh, uh, sawmills, so uh, yeah, I can uh, I can work with that. That's probably him right now. So yeah, he's happy with the results. Um, I mean, yeah, okay, we were within plus or minus fifteen thousandths over six feet. Which, <laughs> when he heard that, he laughed and said, "That's plenty close enough for his sawmill." So he's happy with it. Uh, and again, thank you, Robert for the uh, thank you again Robert for the drill chucks the hole saws and the uh, and the little boxes for parts and bits and just a reminder again if you're at all interested in the dial indicator here and the digital calipers again these these will go up for uh, go up for the draw next when or next Sunday I'll be pulling the draw uh, pulling names out of the draw or name I guess I should say and uh, yeah if basically Anywhere in the world, if I'm legally allowed to mail it to you, I'll mail it to you. Uh, there are some places I don't think I can just do the, you know, Canadian inter, inter uh, national, whatever. But there's a very short list. 
if I can legally mail it to you and your name gets pulled, it's yours. So otherwise, uh, just want to say again, thanks everybody for all your support, all the comments, all the likes. Um, those of you who've subscribed, those of you who haven't subscribed, but still, you know, send comments and uh, have emailed me or whatever. This is totally cool. I've met a lot of really cool people through this, through this whole YouTube thing. So I just wanted to say thank you and draws are part of that. So anyway, until next time, hope you're doing well. I got to the point of just making one really heavy roughing cut and then go back for one uh, finish cut. Oh, turd. Helps if you clamp your work down. I thought I did. And I dropped my wrench. Oh, what a day.